Hey, GED students, Sean sent me this question on Facebook. It is a application of the simple interest formula, which is one of the formulas on the GED formula sheet, but it's got a little trick to it. So let's take a look. It says compute the simple interest earned if $1,500 is invested at a 4% interest rate for four months. So what are they asking me to do or to find here? Well, they tell me to compute the simple interest. Pretty straightforward, not a lot of interpretations needed here. And you should know that indeed the simple interest formula is one of the ones that will be given to you if you're taking your GED. It's at, on the formula sheet almost all the way at the bottom. And the formula it gives is I is equal to PRT. Be a good secretary and copy your formula down first without making any changes and you'll make less errors on the test. And then nicely, it does give you some information there about what these letters stand for. So that's nice. In parentheses underneath, it says I is the interest. So see how I is all by itself on this side of the equation? That's telling us that to find the interest, so this formula right now is set up to find interest. And then it says P is equal to principal. If you don't know what that means, I highly recommend that you print out a copy of the GED formula sheet to kind of mark on through your studies. No, you won't be able to bring in your marked up copy when you go to take your test, but as you study and get more familiar with it, those notes will help you to remember what this means. So principal is the original amount that you invest. That's what we're talking about when we use the word principal in talking about investments. So original money invested. And then we have R. Now R is the interest rate and it is generally, when you're looking at an accounts, an annual interest rate, meaning that it is how much percent or what portion that they give you each year back of your money you know they pay you basically to hold on your money that's the interest rate and then t is time and notice that i had said this was an annual interest rate if i'm looking at an annual interest rate then the time needs to be in years let's say that again because this is the key to this whole problem if it's an annual interest rate as these accounts usually are and will be if they don't specify otherwise then the time needs to be the number of years. Now that we have our formula sheet marked up and we understand that, let's go into our problem here. My next step after selecting a formula, no matter which formula I'm using, is to go looking through my problem to see which of these values I know. Obviously, I can't do much if I just have four letters here, a P, an R, a T, an I, oh my goodness. What I need is some numbers. So let's go looking into our problem to see if they give us any numbers. So it says compute the simple interest earned if $1,500 is invested. Do you remember what we called the original investment amount? We called that the principal. So that means that this, this $1,500 is my P this time. It's my principal. So I'm going to substitute it out. I'm going to trade my P for the number 1500 what other information do I have? Uh, let's see, if $1,500 is invested at a, there we go, 4% interest rate. The interest rate, remember we used R for the interest rate. Now, be careful, be careful, okay? A lot of people just go, hey, it's the interest rate, so that must mean R is four. 4% 4 is not the same as four. Let's say that again, 4% is not the same as four. If you just write a four there, you're telling the bank, give me four times my money. Like I give you five bucks, I want 20 bucks back. Yeah, that'd be nice, but it's not going to happen. You either need to know how to turn a percent into a decimal or a fraction yourself or if you don't know how to do it yourself, you need to keep the percent sign so your calculator can do it for you. The calculator we get to use on the GED, which is a TI-30XS, does have a percent button. So if you're just like overwhelmed, there's enough to learn here anyway, I don't want to deal with decimals and fractions that result when I convert percents, then you can literally just put a percent here 
and the calculator will do the math for you. If you were to use a decimal, for those of you who know that, I would use the decimal 0 0.04. If you were to use a fraction, for those of you who know that, it would be four out of 100, because percent means out of 100 or divided by 100, or literally, you could just keep it as 4%. Any one of these will work. I don't care which one you use. They're absolutely equivalent. They all mean the same thing. So it doesn't matter. Pick whichever one you think is nicer. But do not, do not, do not, do not, do not just put a four alone. Or you are having the craziest interest rate you ever heard of. Like no one will pay you that much. So that's my R, my rate. Now here's the trick, guys. You have a bad habit of just going, hey, this is four months, that's the time I'm good to go. But remember what we said about the T, time. Since interest rates are annual, they're based on years, your time, so yeah, four months is time, but I don't want time in months, I want time in years. And that's really where the trick to this problem is. I don't have a full year. I in fact have less than a year. And even though you don't need to know how to do math with fractions, you do need to understand what a fraction is. A fraction is used to represent a piece or a part of something. I don't have a full year. What I have is four months out of 12 total months in a year. I have four twelfths of a year. Four months and you can always read a fraction bar as out of, a full year is 12 months, and that is what I need to plug in for time, four twelfths of a year. Now, some of you guys know that four twelfths can also be written as one third, that'd be one third of a year, fine. Some of you would divide it as a decimal, fine, but I still need that idea that it's only that portion, that part of a year. Now, of course, I is what I'm finding. I am finding the interest rate in this case, so my I is still a mystery. It will remain an I. My equal sign stays steady. And very, very nice, all of this here is numbers. There's no letters left on that right-hand side. There's just these numbers and the percent sign which your calculator has. So I can just type this entire thing into my TI30XS calculator. And I'm gonna type it exactly the way I see it. I'm gonna type 1500, and then I'm gonna open up a parentheses. And I forgot to even, rude, I forgot to tell you why I use parentheses. Do you see how these numbers are shoved together? P, R, and T are all shoved together with nothing between them. That means they're multiplying. So when I plugged in my numbers, I used parentheses between my numbers so I could tell that they would also be multiplying. So sorry, 1500, open up parentheses, I'm gonna put the four. And then I need that percent sign, guys. Now to get that percent sign, you're gonna have to press the green second button, and then right above the open parentheses key, there's a percent, and so you hit that. And now we're gonna close the parentheses, open up another parentheses, and I need to input a fraction. So I'm gonna use the N over D button, type four on the top, arrow down to the bottom to type 12, and arrow right before I close the parentheses and press enter. And then I can see there that the interest I'm gonna earn after I do all that math is 20. 20 what? Well, hello, it's an interest, $20. This is a trickier example of simple interest, even though this formula is on the GED formula sheet. I haven't seen a lot of problems with it from official GED sources. So really, this is just a bit of exercise building, muscle building with close reading skills and with using formulas. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by it or think it's, oh my gosh, this is crazy hard, Kate, it's not really that big of a deal if you were to skip this one. If you really want to know where to focus with formulas, focus on those geometry formulas. Those ones are super popular. The first half of the GED formula sheet is area, perimeter, surface area, volume. You will need to use those very fluently. And so if you're wondering, oh my gosh, where do I focus? This is so hard. Go focus there. Don't worry about this one so much. Like I said, it's a muscle building activity. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. I just want to send a quick shout out to everybody who supports me and my work and light and salt learning and all the GED students across the world who benefit from that. And I want to also share with you two new cool opportunities 
for people who give to Light and Salt Learning. So first thing is a thank you to my patrons. And I have a new level of patronage that is for you teachers. So if you are an adult education instructor or GED teacher or tutor, or even just a math teacher really, who's looking to up their game with struggling students, I've got some special resources for you at the new teachers in training level of patronage over on Patreon. You can have access to exclusive tips and tricks from me on how to work with struggling students, most specifically in math. And my specialty is with students who have what I call symbolic processing issues. So, you know, those students you keep teaching and teaching and teaching and math just keeps looking like a bunch of nonsense all over the page. Uh, sometimes I joke with my students that it looks like visual vomit to them and they just can't seem to make sense of it. Those are my people and those are the ones I want to help equip you to work with. You know, you can tell me, I've got a student who's struggling with this. How can I help him? And I will be happy to make resources for you. So I also want to thank all my faithful supporters who aren't getting anything out of it, but they're giving $15 a month just to be light and salt and make sure that GED students are equipped with the resources that they need to be successful. Thank you to you. Thank you to my supporters coming in at that $9 a month level, sprinkling a little salt there for students worldwide. And I appreciate my shine a little light patrons as well at just $3 per month. This is an excellent way for GED students. I know y'all don't have a lot of disposable income, but if you want to pay it forward so the next generation of classes has access to the resources that you had, this is a great way. Shine a little light. And then, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee in the last year since I've been doing this. And then to those of you who just started giving for the tutoring student that I've been telling you I've been working with, been working with this girl for a decade. And she's working so, 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 so hard, but she just keeps getting so many obstacles thrown in her path. And so a few of you had been giving cups of coffee for my student C to help with to pay for her practice tests and her read tests of her GED. And if that was you, thank you. If you want to give, you're able to do that on my Buy Me A Coffee page, but do make sure that you say that this is for C. And then I will know that it is to go for her needs. Thank you all so much. And happy learning.